Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're ready now. We just sang a most beautiful song, Amazing Grace. How wonderful our God, even way back then when that was, when that was tuned in to the person that he gave that revelation of amazing grace, I said, Lord, you are always working. You've worked from time and time from time again, a generation. Well, I'm Vicki Perry, one of the deacons here, and Pastor Cecilia gave me her pulpit for the day, and I am so glad because I've had this word kind of burning in my, whatever, my bosom here about grace. What is grace? We all know that grace is one of those unmerited favors, but the Lord really gave me something more that grace was. It's free and it's unmerited favor of God as he manifests, he manifested it in our salvation of sinners and, bestro and bestowing of the blessing so that he does what he means he will do in that. I have, how I got this message and I, I don't want to cry, but my son, my youngest son has been going through a lot of mental, um, medical things right now. But there's been restoration in our family, mighty restorations, even with his brother and with his father that he hasn't seen probably in 15 years. But this is what God gave me one morning when I was waking up. This is what he does. Either He wakes me in the morning when I'm waking up, he'll drop something in, or when I'm going through the kitchen, I don't know what the kitchen has to do with dropping a word into it, but that's, you know, in the kitchen. But this is what he gave me. Grace, compassion, and mercy. As we look to the cross, we see what agony Jesus endured as he walked to his death, as he practically crawled to his death. And we all, with all the stripes and all the thorns that he endured, then they hung him on the cross. And with all his humility, he spoke not one word, not one word did he speak to the crowd of people. Can you imagine how he felt? Alone, abandoned, even by his father. How many times have we felt alone and abandoned when we've gone through things and we think, oh, God, where are you? Where are you? I can't feel you. I can't tangibly hold on to you right now. Like I'm, when we're up on the mountain, when we're in the valley, it's a, he says, I'm still with you. I'm still here. He says, I haven't abandoned you. But Jesus was abandoned by his father. He went to the grave for three days, took on all of our sins for all of us, not one person did he leave out. He arose in newness of life, a victor. He had the victory over sin and death. He conquered death, hell, and destruction. He could have said to his father, where were you in my time of need of despair? And he picked, and you could have picked me up. You could have done what you needed to do. You were my father, but he didn't. But he chose to go the way of the Spirit. Intercessors, as we go through the trials and tribulations that God has given us, we need to go the way of the Spirit. And when he arose, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And that resurrection power that he arose with, that the Father gave him, so we could, we come to you, that he came to us, rather, by the grace of the Father. He couldn't have got any, he couldn't have got where he was going without the grace of the Father. And to sit down next to him, oh my goodness, what grace was there. And hum, the humility that he had to sit down and say, Father, here I am. I did what you wanted me to do. I was obedient and did everything you asked me to do. And he sat down in his righteousness. It is by grace that we are saved, not by works, but by grace. So in our walk of life, let us show that compassion and that grace. And this is what I want to say to you too is, in that grace and that mercy, when we have all the people that are going to, we're praying for it, that revival to come in here, it's by grace that we can hand out our hand 
And they may not look like we want them to look. They may not smell like we want them to smell. And they may not do what we want them to do. But in it all, God has graced them to get here and to show that they are hunger. They hunger for his righteousness and they want what he has. So I'm going to say to you, I'm going to go to um, Ephesians 2. Grace is God's character because I'm going to go a different, I'm going to go a different angle on grace because this is what the Lord has showed me. <clears throat> you were made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin in which once you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedient, among whom also we once conducted ourselves. Each and every one of us have to remember where we came from. We all came from this place that I've been, that I've read in the scripture. And where the outside is coming in, or when we're on the out, going to the outside, to wherever God takes us, we have to remember we've already walked in their shoes and we have to remember how we felt and what we did and, and those are the commonplace in, of the natural world of what they do. But I always have said to the Lord, let me not forget where I came from. I came from a lot of sexual sin. Didn't believe there was no God. There had to be no God. Why was I in this situation? But they were choices I made in my life why I was in this situation. Divorce. Uh, it goes on and on and on. But I don't want to go into that because the goodness of God has brought me here today so I can give you what I need to give you, what he has dropped into my heart. among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just, just as the others. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with him. By grace, you have been saved. It's nothing that we could have ever done, but it's his wooing, his compassion for us. He desires to have relationship with his people again. Once again, Adam and Eve, when he walked in the garden, he wants that relation that they had, the relationship that they had with him. He desires that with us. They broke it, but he resurrected it up on that third day when he came and sat next to the Father. And raised us up together and made us, sit, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, when I got a hold of that long time ago, I sit right next to my daddy. Oh, my goodness, I'm his favorite one. I sit right next to him, and everything that he has belongs to me. Everything he has belongs to me in the kingdom. He has commissioned it to give it to me because I'm his daughter, I'm his beloved, and he has given it to me. Are we going to be faithful for what he has given to us? Are we going to use it according to his obedience and the way he wants us to use it? It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. So the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Now, I'm going to tell you, I had a problem with love a long time ago. I thought love came in many different forms, but not the way that Jesus has showed me that love is. And God, in all of his grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you suffered a little while. Did I suffer when I first came to the Lord? You betcha I did. You betcha I suffered. I didn't know what I was into or in for when I said, yes, Lord. I'm yours. I don't know. I was this Lutheran girl. I didn't know what born again was. I didn't know what any of that stuff was. All I know is I had Jesus in my heart when I had that revelation of him. I'm going to say he started peeling that onion away. One of the first things he did in my household was he cleaned up my language. He cleaned up my language big time. One day I went to the closet. Oof, I had lots of clothes. I love clothes. I made money, enough money to buy any clothes that I wanted to buy. 
and I started putting on clothes. And I'm going to tell you, there was a stack and a heap of clothes on the floor. And I'm laying on my bed crying because I can't wear any of them. And I knew that I could not wear any of them. Too tight, too revealing, too everything. So as God cleans us up, it is painful. It is very faint, painful. But he graces us. He gives us that grace. He gives us that will. He gives us that knowing that we have that potential to come before him more and say, I know that I'm going the right way, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to go this way. I've never traveled this way before, Lord, but I know that I can't wear those clothes. I know that I can't speak those words anymore. They're unpleasing to him. And we have to remember those that are coming in that door or those when we minister outside of these doors, they're going to have those clothes on. They're going to have those words in their mouth. And they're not going to know, but they'll know by the glory of God that's in each and every one of you that you will grace them and give them mercy and compassion and to woo them in to where they need to come. Hallelujah. How do we explain grace? God's life, power, and right, righteousness given to us by unmerited favor. Every gift that we ever will walk in in our life is God has graced us in that gift to make it move, groove, and have its being. It will move if you trust and abide in He and me, he says. I went to, song, or not songs, but Proverbs 4. I go there all the time because he says, trust in me and lean on me. I will show you great and mighty things, but I will show you, I will help you walk the walk that you need to walk. If you lean and trust in me, and I think it's Proverbs 4, or 3 rather. He says, I will grace you, but it's by my grace. That's all in the grace that he went to the pit of hell for and rose. I said, Lord, I used to just think that it was unmerited favor. My sins were all washed away. Yeah, they were, but there's more to grace. Remember, we can't earn it, and we, and we don't deserve it, but by grace, he made us deserve it. It is through grace that God works eff effective changes in our hearts and lives. Will we allow him to do those changes? Will we allow him to come farther into our hearts? My prayer lately for my even myself is, Lord, those hidden parts in my heart, those hidden areas that I don't even know sometimes that are there. Other people see them, I'm sure. But in them is, Lord, reveal them to me so I can lay them at your altar so you can heal me in the areas that I need to be healed in. And also not just healed, but move in the areas that you have asked me to move by the giftings that you have given me. I restrain myself. I'm my own worst enemy. I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can do that. I have been a single woman for many, many years. I've done many things. And I think when it comes to the things of God, no, I can't do that. But I can take a wrench. And I can take a nut and I can do, you know, get under the hood of the car once in a while and say, oh, that's what's wrong here. I need more oil. I need this or whatever. But in, in some of the things that God has asked me to do, I said, Lord, you have to grace me. Even in intercession, I said, Lord, I said, I cry out to you day and night sometimes in intercession. But it's by his grace that I can stay before the throne room and say, Lord, press me through. Press me through. Let me not give up on that person. Because it's not always family that we pray for. It's outsiders a lot of times that I pray for. And I say, Lord, I can't do this any longer. I'm tired. No, press, press, press. Press through, he says. It's by my grace and my compassion that I put in you that I want you to, that, that will, the prayers that will meet his heaven and his throne room will take and break the yoke on people. Not only break the yoke, but it will set the captives free. Breaks the chains, they fall off. They fall off one by one. But uh, my worst thing is I'm not patient enough to see it. Even in my own family, I said, Lord, I need to be more patient. Because it's by step by step. I didn't get here by, I call it a McDonald's fix. Oh, you go up to the window, you tell them what you want. 
oh, Lord, I want this, I want that, I want this. And I go to the next window, and I pay for what I, what I want. Well, Jesus says, I paid everything. I paid the price for everything. Why are you paying for it again? And then I go, and I want to pick up my goods. The goods are seeing what your prayers and fruits are, but I want to see them now, 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 now. But that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. It didn't happen with me, and I know it doesn't happen with other people either. So through it all, God will grace us to do what we need to do with each and every one of our loved ones or the ones he has put on our hearts. Now I'm going to go to Romans 5. I really like this scripture. This scripture really has, has really spoke to me. Romans 5, 6, and 8. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Excuse me, for scarcely for the, for the righteous. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, we were, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received the reconciliation. We rejoice. We're going to rejoice when we see those coming and receiving the Lord because of the seeds. You may not be one to lead them to the Lord, but the seed that you have planted, that you have watered through your intercession, through your prayers and your toil, you will see the fruit of your prayers. God promises that to us. Yes, he does. So God gives grace to those who are in need and who, are hum who come humbly to him for that help that we need. We need a bigger building. We, we're going on two services. So we'll come humbly before you, Lord, and knowing that you're going to help us put everything together the way you've ordained it to be. His grace supplies us with the power to serve. Hear this. To serve, to preach the gospel, endure suffering and persecution and hardship, just like our Lord did. What are some examples of grace? Grace is to the grace or the graceless. And that's where I wrote, I mean, I had Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I already read that. He gives grace to the hopeless. He gives grace to the graceless. I thought, is that really a word, Lord, when I was writing it? Yes, it's a word. And that's, he gives us eternal life, Romans 5. Once again, did I just read? We're saved by grace, Romans 5 again. A continual access to God. That's what I love about the grace. It gives us continual access to our Father. We don't have to worry about doing any of that, like the Old Testaments and all the old sacraments of the, the blood and everything in, for our sins. But I can come to the Father and say, Father, I missed it today. I missed it, and I know I missed it. I repent of my sins today, and Father, help me go on to the path that you want me to go on, not on my own path. And I know it's by his grace that he picks me up, he swoops me up, and he says, okay, Vicki, get going. You need to get going and do what you need to do. You know what you need to do. We know what we need to do as intercessors. And so it's by grace that he does it. And the best thing is it's a free gift. It's a free gift. I didn't have to do anything for that free gift. And I have Hebrews 4. <clears throat> I like this one, too. Hebrews 4, um, 14 and 15. Seeing, then, that we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but with all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
I love that scripture. That is one of my favorite scriptures. And the other one is God's gift of Jesus. That is in John 1, 14. I want to go there also. I'm old school. I have my Bible here. <clears throat> and I, I'm going to learn how to do that tablet, I think, one day. We'll, we'll see. And this is what it is, the gift of Jesus. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and he beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There was only one child, that, and he was Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. He says, I am the way, I am the truth. Come to me to go to the Father. Okay, once again, I had said grace is empowering power. It gives us the strength. It gives us power in the, in the wisdom and the knowledge to walk it out. It gives us everything that we need, the authority and the power that we need to come against every obstacle that we need to as intercessors. He gives us that strength. He gives us strength, authority, and power. He enables us to do what he or she cannot do on their own. Hear that? We cannot do it on our own. So I say to you, grace simply means God's love. It means he cares and his kindness is beyond anything that we deserve. Grace is God's unexpected love that comes to meet us at a time in the road that we are afraid to take. I had to step out in that road when I came to the Lord. I came to the Lord in a vision in a, it, with demons and, and everything else. I never, went to the, I never went to the altar. I, once again, I tell you, I did not know what born again meant. When somebody mentioned to me, I said, oh, no, I don't care what you say. I have Jesus. I know that I have Jesus in my heart. I was this little Lutheran girl. They didn't teach born again. They did not at all. Grace is God's love that comes to lift us up just at the moment we are ready to give up. Oh, many times I've been there. Many times. I remember when I lost my job when I was working. I was a single mom raising three boys. Lost my job, ready to give up, ready to give up. Still Lutheran, but still born again. And I had a little girlfriend. Another. I had a wonderful girlfriend at that time. And I was ready to give up. I said, I have no money. I have nothing. I have nothing. I don't have any money to buy even food. I don't have milk. I don't have bread. I don't even have peanut butter and jam. You know, and she says, oh, but God, this is a woman that could take a nickel and make it five bucks. I don't know how she did it, but it was her gift that God had given her. And so we never want to dismiss the gifting that God has given us in our in in our time, and when he dropped them into us, when we were born again, he dropped every gift that we need right at that moment. She used to make that nickel turn into five bucks. She says, come on, get a bag. And I got a bag, a garbage bag. We walked up and down the road, and that's when they first came out with recyclables, but they were bottles. We picked up enough bottles. I don't want to touch that, I told her. I don't want to touch it. Oh, yeah, you do. You want milk and bread? You want peanut butter and jam? Oh, yeah, you do. Pick it up and put it in the bag. And we took them all home, and we washed them out and took them to the grocery store. Guess what? I had enough for milk, bread, and peanut butter and jam. God supplies our needs. Even in, this, even in a time that I think, I didn't know that God did all that. I had no clue that he supplies all of our needs. And I was at the time of giving up. And that's where we need to hold up each other. There are times even now that I get weary, and I said, God, I need, I need somebody, and I'll call one of my friends. I'll call them and say, I need prayer. I need, I need lifting up. Or even my dear daughter-in-law, Tina, there's times I'll tell her, I can't. She says, don't tell me that. You tell me this stuff all the time. I'm going to give it back to you, she says. I said, good, I want you to. So she's listening to me. Grace is God's love that throws his forgiving arms around us. When we have so much sorrow and unforgiveness, he says, Jesus, I got it in parentheses, it's by grace that I forgave you and now forgive 
others. Forgive others. So this is what I have. Grace. G is for generosity. The will to do something more for others. R is respect. The dignity of life and work. A is action. The mechanism for change. The desire for change. Because we all have to change from glory to glory to glory. We cannot stay the same. God says that won't work. Old man, it's got to be left in the Old Testament. we got to go to the New Testament and gain that new resurrection life and empowerment. C is compassion, the concern for others. E is energy, the spirit that activates us. I thought that was pretty good when I got that out of a book. I thought that was just dynamite. So in everything is, what more is one of the signs? There's one more of the signs that Jesus graced us, and that's by having communion. So I want to end here. Let's have communion. And those online, just get bread, whatever, crackers. It doesn't matter, cookie, whatever. But we all can just use what we got to use in the household. So I want you to examine yourself today. Examine the areas that God wants you to give up unto him. Because he's asking the church even, will you lay down even the giftings that I have given you before my altar? Because they're his. They're the king's. And he's given to us for a time and a place. Will we even do that? And it doesn't mean we don't flow in those giftings. It's a mindset and a heart set. Lord, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me through the giftings that you have given me, but they're yours, Father. Show me how to use them properly. So, Father, almighty Jesus, take the bread. This is my body. This is the bread that I broke on when, I, when we had the Last Supper, he says. Take it. And knowing that this is resurrection life for each and every one of you that I have gifted you and I have given you through the cross. And as I arose again, I gave you new life. Take and eat. So, Father God, almighty Jesus, we take the wine, your blood, Father God, that you shed on the cross. And you shed it for many, Father God. But, Father, it was through your love that you shed your blood for us. So take and drink. So, Father God, as we go in our day today and the days that follow, Father, we thank you for the grace that you have given us. We thank you for the compassion that we can reach out for those that need the compassion and the mercy, Father God, that you've called us to give it to. And as we pray, Father God, that you will strengthen us and renew us and show us more of the road, the path, the journey that you have given us. In the name of Jesus, amen.